time. So, well, mm. it's it's lovely to talk again because uh, it's been far too long um, since we. Yes. I think we we parted last time in London when we had a meal together with your wife um, when I was there for the Lush Spring Prize. And right, that's the last time I saw you. The last time we talked though was about I think some potential project in Alberta. Or you were talking about. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's it's interesting. I, I I'm still in touch with the person who contacted me, but they lost their bid for the Calgary. I think it was it Olympics again or some Alberta Olympics. I can't can't remember exactly. Uh -huh. But basically, it, it's one of those leads that didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. There are a lot but, of them. They circle back, though. But like, what I w would love to um, get your perspective on is, is this, how do we, because you just said that my works contributed in, in a small way to more and more people being interested in regeneration mm -hmm. and re regenerative practice. And lots of people use this term. And I personally feel like having having done the um, regenerative practitioner training I, I sort of realized how deep of a practice there was behind working in this way that I wasn't even aware when I wrote my book um, yeah we, we, we knew that but you, we yeah. knew you'd figure that out at some point <laughs> and and um, and at the time and by the way by the way Daniel it keeps getting deeper yeah, you never. It, it, this that's what's powerful about this work is that you can't possibly know it. Mm. It's a continual journey of evolution. Yeah, th for me that, that's the interesting bit personally because on the one hand I feel like I've been approaching the same, like drinking on from some of the same wells and approaching the same way of working and 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 so some of the things I feel like I've already heard. In, in other contexts, other pathways from other mentors, having worked with John Todd and David Orr. And, um, but then there's, there's something very specific that in, in terms of the frameworks in, in regenerative practice, uh, practice that really invite people to reframe the way they, they think. Um, yep. and, and so I now find myself, like on the one hand, the way I simplify it in my, in, in my mind is that Carol holds a really sort of true to the gospel, kind of very close to her chest type version. Yeah, yeah that's true. And then in a way, Regenesis Group and Regenesis Institute, who always acknowledge the depth of drawing from Carol's work, but also um, through, through all the other people in, in, in the group having developed this, are already to some extent the next row, row out from that kind of, of of making it more easily digestible to more people and and actively yes uh, and that's bring, intentional yeah and, and 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 to some extent i feel like i'm i'm the next ring out of of almost sort of pointing at regenesis group and saying here you can this is where you can go a lot deeper if if you resonate strongly with this call to undo the damage that we've done for for far too long um but I, I now see a sense that that business and like large corporations and everybody is jumping in on this. Like the last round about this time last, um, not the year before last, in December two thousand and eighteen, when J. Walter Thompson put out this report on um, regeneration as the new sustainability or whatever. That that was a kind of clear signal that something was shifting. And and now like I, I was recently in London. Um, invited to speak to people who are sort of business consultants and business leaders around how regenerative economics and mainstream business could somehow connect. Um, and I, yeah. how, how do you sense, like, how, how do we work with this huge amount of interest that now exists and the fact that there are lots of consultants just basically going through their web page and crossing out sustainable and yeah. <laughs> it's true oh my and, goodness it, it's happening that, that is it's a terrible thing but so how, how do you uh, how do you meet that like both how do you meet the demand how do how do you how do you stay true to the depth of a different type of practice that starts from personal development and, and ultimately shift in consciousness and yeah, what you said, just, just what you said there is so key, Daniel. It starts from personal development. Actually, it starts from a whole because you can start anywhere. You can start 
when I first started it, it was for me, the real, if I can speak about myself for a second, the real revelation was, oh my gosh, this is a whole system. And I don't mean the whole, you know, you've heard me kind of be snarky about it. It's taking, it's not taking the SDGs and putting them in a circle and calling it a whole. That's not a whole. Mm -hmm. It's, or lead points and putting it in a circle. Mm -hmm. It's still a list in a circle. And that's okay. But what does really working with a whole mean? And I think the principles that I think what we need to get out there are the principles. And because I think if we, the way Carol's characterized it, I characterize them in five character, Carol characterizes them in seven. doesn't really matter. As long as you have those core principles there to get people to think about, because you have to hold all seven together or I prefer five actually. Mm -hmm. um, wholeness, essence, um, reciprocity, um, potential, not problems, developmental, and uh, missing. Well, that's five. Uh, I know that's five. I, I combined. I was going to throw throw nodal in there, and nodal is the one that I would actually get rid of because I don't think that's essential. Carol calls it. Carol think it's essential for change, but it's not essential for the way a living system works. Is my opinion. We we should actually talk about that. Um, let me say. Wholeness, essence, potential, developmental, uh, reciprocity, or field building, nodal, and I'm missing one. Mm -hmm. ah. Anyway, yeah, it sure does. Um, well, maybe speak to, if you could speak to, to each one of them brief, briefly, then the, the, the seventh one will pop back as you do that. Here, I can, I'll just pop into this for a second. Um, where... Nice picture. <laughs> oh, what are you looking at? A picture of you um, at a conference or something. Um, oh. Um, uh, potential. oh, nestedness. That was yeah, the yeah, was that, that, for me, that's so key. The, like for me, scale linking, the scale linking understanding of participation in wholeness was something that I felt was why I resonated so strongly with a lot of the, the Regenesis work because that sort of, I came in more from a complexity angle um, yeah. and, and a life science, like being a biologist. And that, that nestedness is key. Oh, it's, gig it's gigantic. Cause you, because, and, and the pair, and so also I would add another one to this just because I, for me, it's meaningful. When you find you're working with paradox, you know, you're on the right track. Absolutely. Yeah. So the paradox of nestedness is, as Bucky Fuller said, you know, we, you've got to draw a boundary and then you erase it because it's a figment of your imagination. So you're continually iterating with this living, yeah. right? All those. So the, getting back to personal development, you can start with the whole and the whole asks you, well, now how do we work with the whole once we understand that essence, right? And because that's key is essence. Key, mm -hmm. Essence is so key. And uh, from the Western mind anyway. So how do you work with that? Well. That means I've got to be actually have a group, have group actualization skills. I have to actually have group development skills, integration skills, right? To be able to do that in order for me to be effective as a group. If I'm a jerk, it's not going to work very well. Yeah. I so, agree. so all those, it's just so beautiful that you, you cannot do this without personal development. And the gigantic problem that I have in my work, my particular consulting work, Daniel, is that, People, they hear the word regeneration. I think this might speak to some of your concerns because mm. um, it's still a concern of mine mm. is that people uh, say, well, oh, this regeneration sounds great. Uh, you know, they want to, they're, they're well-meaning, right? They want to do sustainability at the best level they can. Or they want to leave a legacy behind because mm. they've screwed up things in the past or they believe in systems or something. So they hire us, but it's, they're hiring us to deliver a project. Mm. And that's an outcome of the process. It is not the reason for the process. It is not the nature of the process. The process is about our evolution and, the, and how we evolve with that place that we're building this project in and how that place and system informs the project. And in order to do that, we have to change our attitude, who we, who we are in order to work with the community in a different way and work with the ecosystem in a different way in mm -hmm. order to inform that project. Well, that personal development angle uh, 
but you realize that the fractal of what I, of who I am will help realize what the earth is to become um, is gigantic. Because if we don't leave people with that, then it's not going to stay. It's not yeah. going to stick. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is the hard part in our in my particular work through consulting is there's a there's a point within a, a month or two months of getting a project where the client says, and I, this is a quote from one quiet, mm -hmm. one client, my minister doesn't get away with saying the shit you say, Bill, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh -huh. So I've had that happen quite a few times. What's also interesting, Daniel, I don't know if you've heard me say this before, mm -hmm. virtually every one of those clients, except for one, have hired us back within a year. Interesting. That's powerful. Yeah. But it takes them a year to process that stuff. And they say, oh, they were on, the, you know, because they, they're reflecting, right? They realize, yeah. gee, I fired this guy. He was a good guy, but he was a jerk too. You know, he's he trying was, to tell he me. He wasn't working fast enough. Was it, exactly. All APIs, he didn't get all measurable that. impact in X amount of time. Yeah, I know. This all stuff. that stuff. Well, but of course, it all goes hand in hand. The KPI should can be there. The whole, the whole mechanics function needs to be there, mm -hmm. but it needs to be accompanied by being and will. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is where Otto Sharma's work too. It's very similar. You know, he uses Rudolf Steiner's hand, heart, and mind. Mm -hmm. that, those three dimensions of existence from the Greeks are really what are the derivation of our work and all this kind of charisma out there. Mm -hmm that needs to happen. So it's very difficult from a functional world, and especially in the United States, which is why the United States is our least successful country in terms of clientele. Mm. Um, they only see that world through function and, sorry, I'm looking here for, they only see the world through function and that being and will dimension is almost alien to them. Mm. So how do we introduce this in such a way that they realize this, they're stepping into a whole different journey. Mm. That's and, the big, the big one. And how, like for, for me, and, and I'm, I'm saying this with lots of love towards the work and the passion for getting it out there in its depth. Um, is the, for me is the, the, in some of the language used, initially seems to ask people to almost induct themselves into a cer certain kind of um, cult <laughs> well cult or, or a kind of in group um, that where, where you sort of wonder for example the, the word essence if you like if you define what essence means to you how, how would you bring somebody if somebody says you you talk about essence a lot um, mm -hmm. what do you mean by that the core, the, 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 the unique attribute of a living entity at the core, the core unique attribute of a living entity. Who makes, what makes Daniel, Daniel? And then I'll always tell a story. I said, my wife did not fall in love with me because I have road rage, which I do have a little. Mm -hmm. But she fell in love with me after all that personality bullshit. There's a core that she fell in love with, right? Mm -hmm. that's essence that's a good way of, hey. wonderful way of saying it yeah. so our personality is not essence people confuse that a lot personality are, is a psychosis right based on how we've been brought up or how we react to things personality mm -hmm. is necessary but the rest of our lives and basically by the time we're five or six years old we and I think we know this intuitively we put kids into a you know governmental education program and it beats or social systems beat what the genius that is in every individual is, is just is buried mm -hmm. so that you can fit in. And it isn't until you're 30 or 40 years old that you start really discovering, rediscovering, you know, you say, I used to love that, or this is what I used to do, but my father didn't let me do it. Right. Or something. And realize, well, that was bad on him and bad on me. It's time to rebirth that. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's the, the amount of self-limiting beliefs that we carry from childhood is... is it's phenomenal. It's, yeah. I still have them. 
Yeah, same, same here. I think we, we all do. And I think that's part of the personal development journey is to, to really, it's, it's one step to become aware of them. It takes another 10 years to actually do something about it. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And that's what makes this work so powerful yeah. because you're rebirthing. Yeah. So it's not regenerating out there. It's regenerating at all those nested levels, right? This is really interesting because that's another thing that I increasingly get to um, when, when people ask me about what's different. Uh, um, for me, in the notion of regeneration is also an invitation to meet, break down, collapse, um, the, the dissolution of patterns that no longer serve, um, death something that loses its sting because you really understand the nested wholeness of life being fundamentally interconnected and really just one process and all boundaries, including the one of scale yeah. and mutual ego are just yeah. part of Well, that. I, I am you and you are me. Yeah. Right. You, that's, this is the journey. And so this is why this practice is, is, unlearnable right i mean because it's in this learnable it's a continual evolution of discovery of self and what and the universe mm -hmm. yeah no i i i i was reminded in terms of your story um with one of the clients um like with regard to the commonwealth project that ben is doing such wonderful work still <laughs> offering his services to i know ben's been ooh, yeah Commit Hope something happens come out of that. Well, I, I had a really, I'm, I, I found a, I, he explained to me how he sees it. And since then, I see it very differently. Would, well, because he, at the last meeting, again, I was sort of looking at what had actually moved and whether the, these, the potential that we all saw in the beginning of somehow affecting the way that development is done in 53 nations around the world, um, touching 2.4 billion people. It all, it's all very, um, oh, what, what a great opportunity. But um, Ben said to me, for him, the most important and confirmed outcome of it all is the learning that Freya Joost has done in the process of him mentoring her to run yeah. the, the project. And, and that's yeah. wonderful because that also speaks to the levels of work because ultimately that is she she already did such wonderful work before she started with Corpus Foundation and started to, to to work on Common Earth, and and now to have deepened under Ben's mentorage into this way of working, it's guaranteed that for the rest of her life she will do amazing stuff. Right. <laughs> and and, right. and and that might see that's yeah. that's the deliverable. Yeah. <laughs> the deliverable is capability, mm. capacity, and capability. And, you know, before my class from these, well, what's the difference between capacity and capability? And the answer is, I asked them, I said, did you have the capacity to understand what I was talking about before we started this course? Well, they had the capacity, but I couldn't know. They didn't understand it. Now, now, the, now you have, now that you have the capacity, you have the capability to evolve. it. Mm -hmm. yes. Something along those lines. Yeah. Um, so when we leave, the deliverable for, for a regenerative project is building the capacity and capability of people to co-evolve. Period. With, that's with, it. With each other and with place. Because Nate, that's, that's exactly right. With each other. That's, that's why I stopped to just co-evolve. Uh -huh. Because co-evolution co requires the whole. Us, person to person, person to group, person to nature. Because that's the other bit with regard to essence. Like, is... Am I right in seeing that what, what I call biocultural uniqueness of place is very similar to essence of place? Like it's, yes. the, it's both the, the specific uniqueness of that ecosystem and its history, but also the culture and the potential that is held in. Yeah, absolutely. Leading up to a possibility of transformation and, and whether that's realized or not. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think biocultural is a fine term. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, though, it typically gets banalized. I'm, uh, hold on, I'm just going to make it across this intersection here before the light turns.
Okay, perfect. So in, in the context of, because you made, mentioned earlier in our conversation, you mentioned climate change. Um, how, how do you, like last year seems to have been a year where so many people have woken up to a new urgency around climate change to the point that not enough people like we're, we're doing the, the almost we're, we're living the shortcoming of allopathic medicine and um, we're, we're, we're all like fighting as if it's a cancer or wh whatever you want to call it and we're fighting this this anathema of climate change using all these bellicose language and, and all that um, but we're not really asking what's the cause of the symptom that's exactly right as climate change exactly that's what i tell people i say the same thing daniel i say climate change is a symptom mm -hmm. it's not the issue and the issue is our disconnection the issue is our fragmentation of the world and and even treating climate change as a problem yeah. is not gonna is not gonna work exactly because because we solve climate solve climate change let's say cold fusion is somehow realized tomorrow um we're still destroying the planet wow that for me for me that was always i mean good thing is with cold fusion that it's been 40 years away for for more than 40 years and it's still 40 years away sure um, exactly. it, um but but i always felt and i remember this like when i was in at the center for alternative technology in the early 2000s um we always talked about how even if we discovered one of those ma magic bullet technologies um we'd probably then for sure destroy the planet because we haven't done the deeper work of understanding the misguidedness that has come from our sense of separation from each other and from 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 the living world like the the, the lack of understanding that that everything personal is planetary and everything planetary is personal and that we that we now um need to re envision ourselves as part of life as a planetary process yeah um, but when we we understand this but then if, if you look at the news in the evening or even just walk down your neighborhood and see interactions between people and so on are you still hopeful that we can can make this shift with the urgency no. of climate change i'm not i'm not i'm not anymore i used to be but mm -hmm. um but the yeah, i'm just just my wheel here, so this phone balances. Um, I was at a party on New Year's Eve, and there were a number of uh, climate-related, you know, experts there. And we're in Cambridge, Mass, right? There's lots of people in this. And and actually, it was really kind of an interesting attitude. This one guy, Bruce, what's his name? A few books. Anyway, he just said, "Well, it's over. We lost." And you know what? He was actually, his attitude was actually really positive. He said, we lost. And, and I didn't get into, into a depth with him, but, you know, how do we prepare? His question was, how do we prepare for those that will survive? Yeah. I mean, this is, this is, I hear this over and over again. Like the, the guy, um, Michael McDonald, that works with Ben and, and Rolla and, and friends um, in the Common Earth Project. Eh? He's a medical doctor who set up the, the Global Resilience Network. Um, and he's been, for 40 years of his career, he's been in every uh, sort of major outbreak of Ebola or hunter virus or um you, you name it if 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 somewhere in the world due to natural catastrophe uh, or war or something there's the danger of having an epidemic breakout he'll be in the in the first response team and and um he he shared with me that when he was a young man in the in the late or mid 1980s he was part of a uk a u.s government sponsored project that um pretty much concluded to, in a report to the White House that um, if we wouldn't fundamentally change our way of doing things by the mid 1990s, then by the 2030, somewhere between 2030 and 2050, uh, four to five billion people would die on planet Earth. Um, everything that, well, if you look at the hard science, they were right back then. We haven't changed anything since then. Nope. 
and we're pretty much on course for something as traumatic as that. Um, well, look at look at Australia, yeah, and California. But how how do we go on like that? that for me, well, this is... that's the question, and I'm working on that. And believe me, I'm spending a lot of time thinking about that, mm -hmm. and not maybe not effectively, but I've actually put a couple. Let's talk because I put a couple things in motion just this week. One is uh, so I'm part of a interesting. I also feel we need to get out of the, talking to the choir, Daniel. Yeah, absolutely. Which is one reason I don't spend a whole lot of time on regenerative consciousness and stuff. It's I love seeing your posts and all that, but um, we all kind of get it, right? So who who's ready to listen? Who doesn't? And so I'm spending my time networking with business groups who are interested. In, so this is one group out of Chicago called Nexus. There's lots of Nexuses out there. But this is a, another Nexus group founded by a brilliant physicist who's actually been made change physics as we know it. And he's also a multimillionaire. And he lives to network and he lives to introduce. And so he basically finds people who are doing work around sustainability who are kind and loving. Mm -hmm. that's, his, that's his criteria. Kind, loving. And people are doing great work in sustainability. Mm -hmm. So through for whatever mechanism, I've been invited to become part of that group. And it is an amazing group of brilliant people. Mm -hmm. Through that, he, he asked me to prepare the next conference, to actually run the next conference with another guy named Paul Stoltz, who, run, who does something called uh, the adversity quotient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... So yeah, I'd never heard of it, uh, but it's, uh, he said, basically he's a psychologist, neuroscientist, um, organizational development guy. Mm -hmm. And um, this is now taught at Harvard and MIT and around the world, he's got business, he's multimillionaire. Mm -hmm. um, instead of IQ, which doesn't really indicate much about success, IQ is intelligent quotients is kind of a bullshit indicator. What he found out is people who handle adversity well are the people who are successful. So he's developed a battery of tests and ways to improve your adversity quotient, which by the way is, so I stopped him and I said, wait a minute, let me just um, explain this work that I'm hearing from our perspective. So I talked about you know, internal locus of control and external considering and internal locus, external locus of control and internal considering and uh, self organized self um, observing and self remembering. And he said, exactly. That's the same stuff. But okay, I get it. So I challenged him. I said, so you're working on our individual and he does business all over the world, Daniel, mm -hmm. because there are businesses out there who are and what I'm what I'm captivated about is that there are businesses that are businesses, many, many, many businesses who are saying, yes, we know it is about our own development. Mm. That's gigantic. Yeah. If I can, so I've actually, so I flew out to California to meet with them just two weeks ago uh, to see if there was some way that we could fuse into a kind of a whole new platform what he's doing as an entry point and our work and second and third line work and, and whole systems work mm. to somehow introduce this in a different way to the world instead of hanging our hat on regeneration we hang it on i don't know something some new fusion but certainly uh, the level of adversity quotient and i don't know come up with something new i don't want to collapse it into just that domain that, that dimension mm. so anyway that's something that i'm exploring mm. and um the other is is that with this found this physicist that found a nexus just wrote me an email yesterday and said he feels that the resources that are available in Nexus um, need to be focused on regenerative work. Mm -hmm. So I wrote back and I said, that's kind of an answer to a prayer. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we can uh, this, see we can cook this, up. This is certainly something that is happening also in like I in October had an opportunity to like I got contacted by somebody um wanted an hour of my time to to just have a skype conversation and i've i've i'm sure you you've long been in that situation like how that's a whole other conversation how do you how do you 
decide who to say yes to. I know it's a tough one. I get. How do you, I'm sucked how do you, into that all the time. Yeah, and, and also, when do you start charging for your time? Because I, I've I've realized that I, I had a period where I was spending 20 to 40 hours a month on those kind of exploratory calls. Anything from helping a guy get clearer on what he was going to do his PhD on to somebody um, running their entire business idea past me and, and just wanting to pick my brains on, on, on some suggestions of how they could do it differently. Um, and, and very often I get very friendly while well, there's been, been a very useful conversation and I kind of go, yeah, it has been, but more for you than for me. And, 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 um, and ultimately I'm now stressed in getting my paid work done because I've just, yeah, of course. but anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here. Well, no, uh, well, Daniel, Daniel, yeah. I would love to share, I would love to share you because I've wrestled with this for 40 years. Yeah. I would love to share with that my perspective with you on how and, I handle that. Let, let me, let's come back to that immediately. I, I just want to f f finish that story that I was building up towards. Um, in October, I got contacted by somebody who initially I was tempted to say no to. And then I had one of the most wonderful conversations I've had all of last year w with him, connecting in a really deep way, um, on also very much on a personal um, note. And um, long story short, I was invited to Switzerland to a meeting that was about helping to bring more funding into large ecosystems restoration projects um, Great. that are fundamentally community focused and based, that, that are all about drawing, like basically place sourced in, in Regenesis language. And um, they brought 24 of us together and half of the group or slightly more than half of the group were from the funding and philanthropy and, and impact investment world. And the, 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 the smaller half were, were people like Willem Ferveda from Common Land or um, Philippe Villeja from ReNature. So people who had foundations that are doing that kind of work out there. Um, right. and, and it was like the Omida Ya Network, like the eBay people and, and the IKEA Foundation and um, very big, like the like Al Gore's investment um, system, like an like, um, uh, investment fund. Um, there are just huge amounts of money wanting to be poured into restoring damaged ecosystems, restoring or regenerating damaged communities. And, 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 and really the, the money is there. Yeah. The issue that I, again, and this comes back to, to how do we keep the depth of the work and put the personal and the, the, the consciousness and personal shift of re-relating, of re uh, Yeah, I think it, I, center. just to give you a quick answer, I think it's a branding issue, Daniel. And I think the, I think the principles are really powerful in that regard. I think we just have to keep driving home mm -hmm. the principles and what, and then people will ask a question. You know, people don't learn until they're willing to ask a question. Mm -hmm. And so our job is to keep pushing stuff out there, not to, at a, in a gently, gently destabilizing way, which is by the way, why we use the language we use mm -hmm. is to, is so that people are not assuming they understand what you're saying. Because mm -hmm. if they assume they understand, they don't need you. Mm -hmm. If they actually, well, what does that word mean? Or you're using it in a slightly different sense. How come you said that? Okay. That's, you don't, and, and you notice that, that I always have a story associated with words. I don't know if you've noticed that, yeah. but I, yeah. I try to do that so that people actually can then image that in a new way. Mm -hmm. Note, you, you shouldn't just let the words hang out there and be a jerk about it. That's, that's jargon. You yeah. know, that's jargon abuse. But, but jargon is very important because when it's precise, it actually has a unique meaning. And that's, that's the mission. So I think instead of just talking about regeneration all the time, we actually have to start defining the boundaries or the, that's the wrong word, but the, the principles of regeneration in that context so that people start going, diving deeper. Like in regenerative consciousness, Mm -hmm. uh, network, it'd be great to start using those principles and having a deeper debate about that because I know that many of the people on that listserv are at that very sensitive level about understanding the need to be whole and certainly working with nature on its own terms 
what does that require of us and how do we expand that is the big question. Yeah. Then what, what I've noticed like with, with my work in, in social media, whether it's the regenerative um, cultures page or the regenerative consciousness group, and, and now we've, we've even started a regenerative action network. Um, yeah, I think I just signed up for that last just, night. Just yeah, yesterday. Um, is that it's like, it was a bit disheartening for me to see some of the comments because I realized how many people that, that were on the one hand very interested in all, all of this are still really strongly in the habit of othering, of, yeah. of, of um, just getting triggered by one or two comments that make people classify a person into a box um, yeah. and then respond to that box and basically say, anybody who's, who believes that is not one of mine and so I'm against them. Or like it's, it's immediately polarizing. And, yeah. and, and, and so for, for me, these groups still have a long way to go to open a, a real embracing diversity valuing um, discourse on on how, how how we can live the questions together would be my language how, how, yeah how, well lo loving loving each other to uh, evolve is it, and I mean that's why I, I still still put a significant amount of time into these th these groups is that that I do actually feel that we're not necessarily talking to the choir. It's just like people who have, who have kind of begun to walk over a bridge, but, but, but then they haven't crossed it yet. Yes, well, that's true. But, but, but the choir, yeah, I, I, agree, I agree with everything you just said, and there's something I want to add to that, and I'm trying to get my, my way around it. You know, another way to say this is, is none of us are members of the choir. Mm -hmm. And that, and that we, um, we're all developing, right? Yeah. So maybe that's the way to say it, is that are we all on this developmental arc? And do we, are we all friends in the work is the expression. Mm -hmm. Do you, have you heard that from our practice? Mm -hmm. uh, I happen to love that, but yeah, are we friends, are we friends in the work? Yeah, no, that's a lovely expression. The, for, for me, I just remember the, the, um, another thing that I wanted to ask you, which is, um, I, I read with a lot of what I learned in the regenerative practitioner, there were moments where I felt that the, there was a similarity with some of the work that I've drawn from through the International Futures Forum, particularly Tony Hodgson and, and um, Bill Sharp. So, so the Sharp, sure. De developed the Three Horizons framework and the World uh, Systems Model, and and, and there's a, it, they, they've now curated a set of what they call generative methodologies and um and a, and a way of helping people to explore getting closer to what regeneration would would mean drawings heavily on on um particularly uh, pamela and and ben's book or the regenesis book uh -huh. Uh -huh. um and they're fully aware that there is this story that Regenesis holds this this very long curated process and, and lineage. And I would love to help to make that bridge. And I think Bill Bill would really appreciate if whether it's with you or with ideal. Well, I'd be I would be glad to do that. In fact, there was there was a guy in Wellington, New Zealand who, who gave me a great article on the three horizons, which helped open that up to me. Mm -hmm. but I could use some more of that. I would love to do that, Daniel. So, so if I, I'll, I'll send a separate email, but what, what I would love is like ba basically if Bill could spend 30, 35 minutes presenting something to you, Ben and Pamela, and then just get your feedback as honest as it comes, like the, it, no, like be, because you would really appreciate it. And, and I, like he gave well, his, I, you can sign, yeah. you can sign me up for that. Well, well, I don't know if Pamela will be game. She's kind of, she's in her own world, but Ben, I think Ben might be really game for it. Okay. So I'll Ben and I would be glad to do that. I would certainly be glad to do that because I'm I am interested in the three horizons, mm -hmm. and um, would like would like a deeper explanation. Because I I think that th there is this complementarity because I I very strongly remember Pamela and Ben saying to me after the TRP, we really want this work to be in constant development because that's at the essence of, of it that it needs it's yes. never finished as you just said so wonderfully, um, and then I felt that there was little. Like I, I haven't found my way of how can I contribute to development? Like maybe it's because I, I still need to do a lot more 
assimilating and learning of the work. Well, well we, we're again, yeah. we're all in that we're all in that boat. But I think um, uh, this is a longer conversation. Um, mm. What I and but but seriously, Daniel, a hundred percent. I I am really interested in Three Horizons. Excellent. I I, I, I respect your your appreciation of Bill's work. Uh, like I said, I've spent some time with it, but I would like some hand holding with it. Yeah, excellent. So I'll I'll, I'll set set that up. Um, as yeah, a, as super. Time. And I'll and I'll and I'll let Ben know, or you can let both of us know. Uh, and and we'll invite Pamela if she wants. Mm. Because uh, one of the the things that that for me was one of the absolute highlights of last year, um, actually both happened in the in the same event. Like meeting um, uh, Jason Twill was was just wonderful. He's su such an amazing guy, um, <laughs> and and um, I just felt felt really connected with him. I just recently had a uh, had a call with him just before Christmas. Oh, and good. At that same meeting, which was in in the, the Commonwealth meeting in London. Um, I believe you, you did you men, uh, when you went over to New Zealand to Auckland to t teach the TRP did you meet uh -huh. a guy called Johnny Freelander? I don't think so. Well, I that whole like the magic that you guys started to catalyze in the Bay of Auckland and and in New Zealand with the, the highest density of regenerative practitioners in in the world and and then this yeah. wonderful blend between um our western, our western verbalization of some deep life principles and 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 patterns that of course the maoris been holding th for thousands of years a, a another way of wording yeah. same thing because it's it's essence it's true it's real it's did, did i did magic. i tell you the greatest compliment i ever got no this is i i love this story so i i facilitated the first maori yeah. and pakiha uh, mm -hmm. the sustainability planning group in um, Auckland and mm -hmm. the planning group. Anyway, so there's a much longer story about this, but in the middle of the session, this guy, a big Maori guy comes up to me and jabs his finger in my chest. And he says, you believe what we do. Mm -hmm. How do you convince the white man? And I'm a pasty face white guy. So I thought that was a great compliment. Right. Yeah. And I said, I said, listen, I, I'm not here to teach you anything. I want to learn from you. And he sa I said, so where do you start? He said, well, we start with the universe. I said, well, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And, but how's it working for you? He said, well, it's not. I said, good. Maybe we do have something to share. Mm -hmm. and that was the, the genesis of that uh, work, actually. He, I, like this guy, Johnny Freelander, he, he's part of that network. And he, as far as I understood from our conversation, has just recently partially kind of inspired Ooh. by did you need to go somewhere yeah i just sound, i realized i'm we gotta can we reschedule can we keep going i've got a meeting yeah sure I, do, you, do you have five minutes or is it uh, i don't i don't actually okay. i'm late i realize right. i'm okay then i'll take then, then we will we'll, can you can you write something write that down so let's pick that up down. yeah i'll, yeah, I'll send you an email you, and we'll find another uh, well actually let's get some agenda items because yeah. i would love to spend more time yeah. this is really helpful for me daniel it helps me express Anyway, if you're a game, I'm game. Yeah, absolutely, I'd, I'd love that. I'll send you an email and we'll we'll, we'll reschedule and have a. Okay, have a I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I had to. Uh, anyway, no busy problem. day. No problem. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks, Daniel. Love you. Yeah. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye.